Will you please stand for the arrival of the bride? Well, it is a, a joy and a privilege to welcome you to this uh, most wonderful of occasions as Tom and Esther are to be married today. Uh, we're joined uh, from others around uh, the world. Uh, this service is being streamed live and I think a few folk over in the uh, church centre here at St Michael's just across the way uh, watching too. Uh, so whether you're here in the building or wherever you may be, you are very welcome. Uh, it's been lovely, actually, to get to know Esther and Tom over this uh, last little while uh, as they've prepared uh, for today. And uh, that kind of brings a real kind of personal touch uh, into our uh, ceremony. And if you don't know me, uh, I'm uh, David, uh, the vicar here. Uh, we're here to support them, to celebrate with them and to pray for them. So why don't we begin uh, with prayer? God is love. And those who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. So God of wonder and of joy, grace comes from you. And you alone are the source of life and love. Without you, we cannot please you. Without your love, our deeds are worth nothing. So we pray, send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love that we may worship you now with thankful hearts and serve you always with willing minds through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to remain uh, standing. And if you take uh, your order of service, uh, the words to our opening hymn should be in there. Uh, be thou my vision.
In the presence of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we've come together to witness the marriage of Esther and Tom, to pray for God's blessing on them, to share their joy, and to celebrate their love. Marriage is a gift of God in creation through which husband and wife may know the grace of God. It is given that as man and woman grow together in love and trust, they shall be united with one another in heart, body and mind, as Christ is united with his bride, the church. The gift of marriage brings husband and wife together in the delight and tenderness of sexual union and joyful commitment to the end of their lives. It is given as the foundation of family life in which children are nurtured and in which each member of the family, in good times and in bad, may find strength, companionship and comfort and grow to maturity in love. Marriage is a way of life made holy by God and blessed by the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ with those celebrating a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Marriage is a sign of unity and loyalty, which all should uphold and honour. It enriches society and strengthens community. No one should enter into it lightly or selfishly, but reverently and responsibly in the sight of Almighty God. Tom and Esther are now to enter this way of life. They will each give their consent to the other and make solemn vows. And in token of this, they will each give and receive a ring. And we pray with them that the Holy Spirit will guide and strengthen them, that they may fulfil God's purposes for the whole of their earthly life together. But first, I'm required to ask anyone present who knows a reason why these persons may not lawfully marry to declare it now. Tom. Esther, the vows you're about to take are to be made in the presence of God, who is judge of all and knows the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. In a moment, after Esther and Tom have made their declarations, I'm going to ask uh, you, gathered family and friends, to declare your support. And when I do that, uh, if you could respond, we will. (laughs) (laughs) That's all good. We'll take that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Thomas Oliver Joel, will you take Esther Rose to be your wife? Will you love her? Comfort her, honour and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I will. Esther Rose, will you take Thomas Oliver Joel to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. So will you... Uh, the family and friends of Esther and Tom support and uphold them in their marriage now and in the years to come. We will. Let's pray. God, our Father, from the beginning, you have blessed creation with abundant life. So pour out your blessings upon Tom and Esther that they may be joined in mutual love and companionship, in holiness and commitment to each other. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, if you'd like to take a seat for a moment, we're going to have our uh, first reading. Your walled garden... Your marriage should have within it a secret and protected space, open to you alone. Imagine it to be a walled garden, entered by a door to which you only hold the key. Within this garden, you will cease to be a mother, father, employee, homemaker 
or any other of the roles which you fulfil in daily life. Here you can be yourselves, two people who love each other. Here you can concentrate on one another's needs. So, take each other's hands and go forth to your garden. The time you spend together is not wasted, but invested. Invested in your future and nurture of your love. Thank you. Can I invite you to stand as we sing our second hymn? I invite you to take a seat. Our Bible reading is taken from the Song of Songs, chapter 2, verses 10 to 13, and then chapter 8, verses 6 to 7. My beloved spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one. Come with me. See, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth. The season of singing has come. The cooing of doves is heard in our land. The fig tree forms its early fruit. The blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my beautiful one, my darling, come with me. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death. It's jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot sweep it away. If one were to give all the wealth of one's house for love, it would be utterly scorned. You know, one of the lovely things about what I do is getting to know uh, people and their stories, and especially couples and their stories as they come to be uh, married. I have to say, when Tom told me that he uh, proposed to Esther uh, by a large pond near Kettering, uh, <laughs> my, my, my immediate reaction was interesting choice, but the reality... Uh, was way more romantic uh, than that first uh, initial billing. 
Tom had earlier set up uh, atmospheric lighting, laid out pictures uh, that recalled moments and memories uh, that told the story and all in the place where they first met. Uh, and as the rain started, he was even prepared to get a wet knee as he bowed to <laughs> propose. It's been quite a journey uh, to come to today from these uh, childhood sweethearts who met at school via a mutual friend. They've done long distance, yet remained close. Uh, they've described their kind of banter, their kind of endless talking. To, to be fair, we've kind of uh, experienced a bit of that uh, along the way. It's been good to see. Uh, they've spoken of their love for each other and their hopes and their dreams uh, for the future. And I suppose you could say that uh, this in itself uh, might be reason enough for gladness and joyful song. Yet the joy is intensified and increased by both the beauty and the solemnity of making their commitment to each other in the presence of God. Indeed, a God uh, that I think you'd say you've drawn closer to uh, on your journey towards this day. I thought the poem uh, that you chose actually uh, wonderfully depicts a kind of secret place uh, expressed in the commitment uh, of marriage uh, and the security that flows from that uh, commitment helps build that walled garden, that uh, secret place. You know, fully lived out, your vows create a safe space in which you can both flourish. Promises like all that I am, I give to you that mean essentially holding nothing back. I'm going to put my guard down because I feel safe with you, because I know you've got my back and I've got yours. Actually create that environment uh, which is for your flourishing. I think that poem wonderfully gives actually a picture, an image of the intimacy of marriage. Our Bible reading, though, uh, gives us something of a clue about how that can be sustained. Now, maybe you, you, you didn't notice uh, but the verses in our reading came from uh, right near the beginning uh, of the, a book from the Bible and, and then right uh, from the end of it. Uh, so something about the, the, the start and the, and the finish. And yet they seem to depict a, a love that grows stronger. You know, arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come away with me, becomes love is as strong as death and it burns like a blazing fire. And all of this, despite what kind of happens in between, uh, which is a mixture of ups and downs, highs and lows, hardships and disappointments, joys and celebrations. And all of it in the context of the kind of security, actually, that we all long for. This was said of our deepest need. To be loved but not known is comforting but superficial. To be known and not loved is actually our greatest fear. But to be fully known and fully loved is in fact how God loves us. You see, the point of our reading uh, is this. Uh, the Bible takes a picture of kind of human romance at its best to point to a greater love than that, the love that God has for each of us. In fact, the Bible says, you know, marriage itself at its best is but a small glimpse of God's love for his people, meaning that every good and admirable quality we see when a husband and wife help each other to feel safe and valued and secure, where they bring the best out of each other, is just a tiny glimpse of the love that God has for his people in Jesus Christ. And we know that that is a love that is as strong as death because it took Jesus himself to the cross. That's the kind of love that can't be quenched, but neither can it be bought. Yet once it's received, it changes everything. It is said, if your output exceeds your input, then your upkeep will be your downfall. I might need to repeat that, eh? 
If your output exceeds your input, then your upkeep will be your downfall. How do we continue to love and have that love grow stronger, as our reading uh, tells us? The love in these verses grows and develops because it's fueled by an inexhaustible input, the love of God poured out into our lives, offered not as a prize or something we have to earn or a reward, but just as a gift that we receive. When we've received it, it creates an endless supply from which we might show love to each other. Our reading today celebrates, yes, the love like this, like the love of this wonderful couple before us, but it also points to the greater love that we were all created for and in some way hunger for uh, to know. That's the love that brings us into the relationship for which we were made and designed. And then, then we can burn without burning out. Shall we get these guys married? So who gives this woman to be married to this man? <laughs> Tom and Esther, I now invite you to join hands and make your vows in the presence of God and of his people. I, Thomas Oliver Joel. I, Thomas Oliver Joel. Take you, Esther Rose. Take you, Esther Rose. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And in the presence of God. And in the presence of God. I make this vow. I make this vow. I, Esther Rose. I, Esther Rose. Take you, Thomas Oliver Joel. Take you, Thomas Oliver Joel. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And in the presence of God. And in the presence of God. I make this vow. I can have the rings. <coughs> Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let these rings be to Esther and Tom a symbol of unending love and faithfulness to remind them of the vow and covenant which they have made this day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just manoeuvring the ring into position. <laughs> there we go. Means you can't take it off now. <laughs> <laughs> Esther Rose. Esther Rose. 
I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body I honor you. With my body I honor you. All that I am I give to you. All that I am I give to you. And all that I have I share with you. And all that I have I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Then holding the ring. <laughs> right hand. There we go. Thomas Oliver Joel. Thomas Oliver Joel. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body I honour you. With my body I honour you. All that I am I give to you. All that I am I give to you. And all that I have I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the presence of God, and before this congregation, Tom and Esther have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. <laughs> I can take your ring finger. So those whom God has joined together let no one put asunder. If you'd like to kneel for a prayer of blessing. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for you've created joy and gladness, pleasure and delight, love, peace and fellowship. Pour out the abundance of your blessing upon Tom and Nesta in their new life together. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts and a crown upon their heads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship. Awake and asleep in joy and in sorrow, in life and in death. And finally, in your mercy, bring them to the banquet where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace, that you may please him in both body and soul, and living together in faith and love may receive the blessings of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Well, if you'd like to take a seat, we're going to continue in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we celebrate before you the marriage of Tom and Esther and uh, the joy of this occasion. We thank you for the qualities and gifts which they bring to each other. And we pray that they will flourish under your care and protection as they enter this new stage of life together. Like the walled garden of the poem, we pray that their marriage will be a safe place where they'll never feel they have to hide their real selves and are able to express to each other their inmost feelings, dreams and hopes. May they learn how to truly listen to each other and make each other feel loved, secure, appreciated. We pray that in your word they would find direction and purpose for their lives, that your spirit would lead them into truth and draw them close to you, and that you would help each other to care for each other through all the experiences of life, good and bad. May their love overflow to others, 
to neighbours in need, to friends. May their sharing bring refreshment and their household grow in knowledge and love so that by the end of their lives, with hearts content, there remains for them the joyful anticipation of heaven. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, taking our orders of service, we draw all our prayers together, spoken and unspoken, in the prayer that Jesus himself taught, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we have our final hymn now. Uh, in Christ alone, shall we stand together? <laughs> witnesses forward to uh, come and sign the uh, legal documents. Uh, if the rest of you would like to take a seat.
cushion helps. So Tom, can you come first? If you'd like to if you'd like to practice you can practice on that. So it's fountain as well. Yeah. So I can't afford to make a mistake now, can I?
as we uh, come to head into the rest of the day. Can you stand? So may God guide you into truth and peace and make you strong in faith and love and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.